Welcome to Unashamed Podcast with Phil Robertson. Of course, we got Al, uh, your Robertson quarterback here. I've got Jace, uh, who's always got his insights. Today, we have a very special first guest on the Unashamed Podcast, along with us three, and that is Miss Kay, my mom. And uh, she always brings a great insight into any Robertson discussion. And uh, you're going to have a lot of fun uh, with that one. She and Jace have always clashed through the years. And so we're going to dive into that today. Uh, we're, we're talking about Abraham and Sarah, which, you know, mom is the perfect example to us of, of that Sarah from the Bible, uh, sort of a matriarch. So we'll talk about that and a lot of other awesome stuff. We're glad you tuned in to Unashamed. I am unashamed. What about you? How long? I'm, I'm is a creature. This? Don't worry about it. You don't worry about it. I, I, me and when I will I'll it wrap it up. It's it'll seem long. It's it's long. <laughs> I mean, most time they say it goes by fast, but when you talk over 45 minutes, nope, that was long. That was a long talk. <laughs> well, for it's funny because for us it's a long talk because. You know, like we're not, we don't usually just sit in a circle yeah. and talk. That's the difference. But if you had an audience, I would, would pay my kids to sit in a circle and talk to me. <laughs> well, you can't. You've, pro- I, you've proven that. Let's, I'm for let's, sale. Yeah. I mean, you've done that. <laughs> I'm, you can pay me, mom. I'll sit in a circle and talk to you. What, that, do you, what are you Jeff paying? Will too. <laughs> What's crazy? You don't even have to pay Jeff won't. much. What's crazy is, is our entire life, whether we had no money. Or had money. Kay's always given, you know, slip me a 20. You know, I'd see you in church and you're like, here. Well, now she is really shucking it out. <laughs> everybody. Everybody she meets. I'm not shocked. She's shucking it out to everybody. You, well, you what's funny, she'll offer it to me. And I, I was like, Mom, I, I don't need, like, I'm good. She'll be like, well, here, I'll just give you $20. And I was like, nice. I, I got so it. I've just made the look. choice not to even say how much do we have left. I just say, Whenever, whenever, whatever. Well, look, since we've gathered here to have this this talk, I mean, we have, I we have our parents here. <laughs> yeah. I actually discovered something interesting about members of our family. I'm going to share with you, Phil, because this will be like a type of intervention. Here's what I've noticed Uh-oh. when it comes it's to a podcast it. intervention. Yeah. It's this an is, unashamed intervention, the very first. It. And I'm going to identify a phobia that has not gotten any any time in our society this there's a condition there's a group of people and my brother al and my mom Kay. they have this condition they have this what would you call it's a syndrome they have a fear of dying with money I, so I, I agree with your assessment. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like as soon as they get the money, got to spend it as fast as they can oh, because they don't want well, to die. Hard. It's and, hard for a rich man to get into heaven. Ooh. A woman. Scripture. <laughs> yep. So Case yeah. fixed it where she won't die rich because she says it's so hard for the rich to make it. Yeah. I'm going to be poor when I die. But well, you're right. Jay, you were correct. I never saw it as a syndrome. It's a syndrome. But you're right. I can't, like, I'd rather give it away or spend yeah. it than keep it. But I, but in my defense, since I mom had me and then raised me, it has to come from mom to me. Oh, no doubt about it. So I'm it. saying it's, it's some sort of, I, it was a learned behavior. But the one good thing about mom is you and I are very generous. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm not saying it's a negative syndrome. I just was going to tell y'all, y'all have that syndrome. Yeah, It's almost a phobia. I'm so glad you brought it out. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Well, now this reminds me a lot of my childhood growing up because mom and Jace, you know, didn't always see eye to eye. Is that a, is that a, how would you assess? It's according to uh, who you talk to, (laughs) me or Jace, how Uh, that childhood was. She had this situation where she wanted to be a good mom. It was coming from a good place. But she wanted to have a conversation every day as soon as I awakened. The problem is I'm not a morning person unless I got a shotgun in my hand. I'm duck hunting. But just to get up and so she would. You're not a morning person. You wouldn't even get up. You sat there and stared out the window for 20 minutes. You have your syndrome. I have mine. (laughs) There's a 10 to 20 minute thing that I go through where I just sit on the side of the bed. I still do it to this day. 
and I'm literally staring into know. nowhere. Are you meditating? Are you contemplating? You know, if I really told you, it would scare you what I'm thinking about. <laughs> yep. I'm thinking about what day is it? Where am I at? It's like when I go to sleep and then I wake up, I have to then like... It's Realize like you're alive yeah. in your own planet Earth. I'm alive. What day of the week is this? Where? What did I do? So, and I didn't, you know, most people do that when they got hammered the night before. I didn't get hammered the <laughs> night before. But I just don't, I have to figure out, okay, yeah, I'm here. Let's do it. Yeah. But she would start asking me questions. You know, some, what are you I, do? some I needed to ask you. Uh, when you're coming home, did you have practice yeah. or something like that? And you just stood there and yeah. sat there and stared out the window. <laughs> I know. And you, th so you thought he was ignoring you all this time? Well, I was ignoring her because I didn't, I couldn't do two things at one. You know, she was right. asking me the couldn't question, and then she would get mad, and then we would, next thing you know, we're arguing. We did that for what, three or four years? Uh, I think it started when you were two. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so I guess we did it for about 16 years. <laughs> <laughs> so more yep. So what you told me, Mom, was that Jace told you later when we had this discussion at some point that you you didn't get him and you didn't get his humor. That was part of the, he was joking about a lot of stuff that you that, took, that's true. took that's true. too seriously that you just weren't getting him. Yeah, I should have took a course on how to understand Jace, his humor or whatever he was doing. But we did fuss a lot. Well look. This may be a shock to you. I have the same problem with my lovely wife. So we made a deal, and this is a deal, and everything just were, you know, rainbows and roses when this happened. We do not have any conversation about anything that matters or even could matter before noon. <laughs> So when she gets I up, hope I don't die before noon. <laughs> you couldn't know it. Well, I, I have not been that privy. I never did. I, I've been with with Miss Kay here for about 50-something years and with y'all about that same amount. But this is Ow. sort of new information for me. I didn't know this was going on behind yeah. the scenes because I'd get up about back in the day, you know, about 5 or 6 o'clock. You know, when it got daylight, I was out there either – trying to catch fish or build duck calls, one or the other. So yeah. I didn't know the behind the scenes, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was every morning I would wake up, and I looked at it as an interrogation every morning. <laughs> it was just I wherever you are. Wh I should have been an FBI agent. So the reel back the years, have you ever, other than you ready, Jace, uh, I never have stood over your bed when you woke up in the morning. I wasn't there. No, you would just say you ready, which means we're going fishing. That means you fishing. He, he slept in a little bit. I'd say, yeah. you ready, Jay? Yeah. That means we're going duck hunting. Or well, sometimes he well, that also translates yeah. to let's go. Well, it's, it's the like, work. You, ready? you know, the right. commercial fishing, you know, that we did for 20 years. I realized in about the first, you know, it was fun for about two weeks. And, uh, you know, anything turns into work, even, even fishing, you know, because that's how we were making our money. Oh, it was work. But then I realized when you said, are you ready? After two weeks, I realized, yep, I'm ready for doing every crappy job that you don't want to do in this <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You're the youngest. That means I don't want to yeah. do this, and you're my son, so that's what you're here for. Yeah. Well, the summers, yeah, it was a workhouse, I mean, down oh, here. Cause, yeah. But at the same time, you know, I mean, there was a lot of fun, too. We fished. It of course, was. I think Willie and I liked – the fact that Jace was always into with mom because it provided cover for us because yeah. they were always in it. So you were able to kind of avoid the fray and, you know, we, we didn't catch the Oh, air. let's face it. Y'all played me like a <laughs> fiddle. Well, you know where I knew I was in trouble? Uh, you know, because I knew Al, Al went through some, uh, how do you want to put those The prodigal years? wandering. Yeah. yeah. Well, the prodigal wandering started, you know, when he was here. Yeah, I was 14. And uh, so what happened, but when I would get in the car with him, you know, I, I mean, they're using four letter words, you know, and talking about what they're doing. So every time I get mad at Al, I'd go tell them, think of that, that was going to happen. And you just had a way of getting out of these situations. I was know? slippery. And the worst one I did finally, when I knew they had evidence, because I'd seen they had gone and, and drank the night before and they had a number three wash tub full of little 
is back when those little Miller lights were in those the ponies. Ha- yeah, the pony bottles. The ponies. They yeah. had a whole tub full of bottles, and I knew it was in the trunk. And uh, we got that was it. the day of the the mass lashings. No, no, no this is another day. different. Another deal. Another this, deal. Y'all were still in denial at this point. <laughs> yeah, because look, I skirted. So I go in and tell mom. I was like, "Look, I have evidence in the trunk of that car is you know about three dozen empty beer bottles that they drank last night." So they went down there, and I was thinking, "Why is he not in trouble?" Because I wasn't in on the situation, and mom said. Oh, well, we figured it out. They went to they went fishing on the beach and they cleaned up the beach. <laughs> and I said, "And you believe that? <laughs> and it's all the same bottle?" I was we very good I was very naive at that time. And <laughs> Alan could act was, so yeah. good. He's a perfect manipulator, I guess you call it. Oh, it's it's yeah. really scary yeah. that I was such a good liar. And then what happened is they beat the dog poop yeah. out of me. And then Jace caught the brunt because what happens is when you tell you're a snitch <laughs> you're a same snitch. things going it's on in rat. prisons today i mean you oh, get yeah. you know i got whooped and i said well okay well i, I had just, to apologize I'll, after i became a Christian. i will say that y'all ended up remarkably godly after your you know i guess you could say when you hit the old early teens and sin begins my old theory on raising kids is you better have them at least respect you by the time they get in the ninth grade and y'all have pretty well explained why because yeah. when the sin starts it starts with everybody right. and then the, then the friction begins but i you know think for us we that's were... when the distance between you and your children there's a there's a distance there once sin breaks in there the evil one gets involved well and it goes back to that original one jay said in his sermon a few weeks back he said he said you know how you you want to know how how you know a teen is lying their lips are moving oh, all yeah. right <laughs> which was kind of an overstatement you train them up in the way they should go and when they get old they won't depart from it right. so there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, in, there's a lot of instruction, rebuking, correcting, and training going on. That first ten or twelve, you better you better do it with your children. Well, I mean, there's something in a teenager that would rather they would rather lie than than disappoint you. They they yeah. don't you know even though they know it's going to be worse and you're going to find out. There's just and I had it too. You know you just don't want to come across as disappointing. Yep. to your parents so yep. you, you learn how to lie or embellish well, yep. i mean our our family is king of embellishers but i will that's say that's just this. having a good imagination yeah <laughs> well we're pretty good storytellers we are but why would people want to listen to us if we didn't make it a little bit better i've always looked at it like you know my three brothers and me we must have been like the hardest hearts in the world because we got to see something supernatural happen when y'all change your lives and then, you know, go from bad behavior to then having people in your house, you know, for just week after week. And after a while you look up and say, it's a strong evidence that there is a God. I mean, that's the one thing. If you'd have taken the godliness between myself and Miss Kay out of the equation and it was just hectic, meanness, ripping. So if you'd Fighting and you know, yeah. if, if it's just a lifestyle of it, I wonder who started that. Yeah, if that had kept up, Al, you and Jace, I don't know. You know, wouldn't have made that, it. Wouldn't huh? have made it. It's, but you went about as long as you should. I That's mean, you a, know, what I mean, you well, kept going. But there was, I will say to both of y'all's credit, that even though you were in denial about me, but I was also very good at hiding it. <clears throat> when I came back, I mean, y'all met me. I mean, exactly like the Luke 15 story, which we talked about Mm -hmm. at the last podcast. Yeah, we did. Because you met me, but you didn't, it wasn't conditional. It wasn't a list of rules. It wasn't any of that stuff. We didn't drag up every mistake you'd ever made. you didn't say, all right, it's it's boot camp for you. You just said, come, you you welcome me back. And so, but that had a profound effect on me because like Jay said, when you've been living a lie for a long time, you expect people then to react badly to you. Instead, you show grace and it turned me around. I mean, it was a complete from that point forward. So, you know, I, I think about those verses that says, um, do not exasperate your children. You got to have the right kind of hand as you're going through 
you got to be strong when you need to be strong, but you also have to show grace when you need to show grace. And so it's that balance because you guys do have adult relationships with us. Here we are doing a podcast together, as Dad has mentioned. I mean, you think about it, and Jace had a point with his lesson on the uh, the uh, cell phone, the clear and present danger of the cell phone. No. <clears throat> if you think about it, <clears throat> okay, I mean, that's that's what it should have been. The dangers that's awaiting <clears throat> this current crop of young people. The dangers are greater no now. Doubt. Oh, no doubt. Way no doubt. more than they were when y'all, and, and way more than when I came out. It's just of, more sophisticated. Oh, but yeah. The responsibility is greater for the parents. That's right. Yeah. So, with right. more danger to the young people because more responsibility. You are correct. Look, I didn't mince any words. It's a two way street. Both are at fault. You know, right. just on the way down here, how many times are you looking around? People are just there, you know, they're zombies on their cell phone. But we also know people that, I mean, friends of ours, people that work for us that don't have adult relationship with their kids. In fact, it's so volatile and violent and terrible that it's an awful relationship. It's yep. just chaos the, all the time. And that's terrible. And that happens, unfortunately, I think more in our culture than what we have, where you st- still be able to do things together, enjoy being together. What's amazing is now. <clears throat> <clears throat> During the current time frame, y'all have reached 50s, going into 60s. Chase turns 50 this year. Did you know that? Turn 50. How old are you, Al? 54. It's just a <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> well, if you think about it, now, amazing as it sounds to this audience, it's more, it really is, it's more uh, spiritual kinship kingdom uh friendship yep. it's, it's more y'all are like brothers <laughs> sons right. of god <clears throat> so are we right and, and it, it's it's not so much uh what I, what do you call it it's not so much just the family structure this right. is more a godly structure yeah, now it's a, it's a kingdom situation yeah, it's, it's, i mean you have a physical family and you have a spiritual family that's why people that don't you know have physical families i mean like we've kind of taken in this nicaraguan uh orphan well she views us as her family but you know it's it was done through jesus and the spiritual family you know if you look at abraham it started with you know children well you know i'm gonna you what i'm gonna have a we're gonna have a chill but you start and you just watch abraham and his wife and then their child and then then their offspring it it takes on a spiritual life of its own. That's, right. That's the way they went. Well, and you think about it, like <clears throat> it turned out they're people of faith, and then your little family structure, what was ever going on, it just right. kind of mentioned, but but it all turned spiritual. Well, before I mean, we we talk a lot about how we were raised. Before we came here today for the podcast, we all went. You guys went to town. Jason and I were already there. Other family members gather. Because there's a, you know, this wouldn't make a wish, but something like that dream, whatever. And, you know, a sick kid, and they wanted, and his dream was to meet us, our family, because it had, happens all the time. Well, yeah. they saw us on TV. Saw us on and, TV. But then there's that, there's a spiritual connection too, as you said. And I just thought in that moment, we all got together, we talked, we laughed, sigh was sigh. And, you know, you just kind of love on them a little bit. But then at the end, Dad gives them a little charge about the resurrection. Mm-hmm. And I'm watching them, and they're tearful, you know, because they're like, yes, that's our hope. They have you know, a very sick child. Yeah. And so at the end of the day, it's that that's what a family does. And then yeah. you can do that with another family. That That's powerful. Well, I was presenting the resurrection as yeah. the fallback position if God takes this kid early. But right. make sure you understand that there's life beyond – Beyond the the grave. Oh, I thought it was excellent. You read First Corinthians fifteen. You yeah. know, what if there's no resurrection? Well, if there's no resurrection. Paul was basically saying we're all toast. I mean, oh, you know, the faith, the church, the there would have been that. no meeting you, with them praying for the God would heal the boy. We hope that's what what, what takes place, which right. we've seen it before. Yep. But, but if it doesn't happen, remember there is a resurrection of the dead. So well, yeah. So. And then you read that you in First Thessalonians four, you went through the process. But I thought it was really good because this kid was he ten or twelve, mm-hmm. and he's safe. There's no doubt. Sure. Oh yeah. Th- this kid is going to heaven. It, if there is a heaven, from people who don't believe, yeah. this kid's going there. Yeah. Uh-huh. You know, innocent, Great safe. Kid. But you know, he's stressed out and worried. Well, because you know, 
when doctors start talking about, you know, disease is this serious, you know, in the back of your mind, you're like, it's not looking good. And he's, th- he's thinking about death, but nobody wants to have that conversation with people because it gets awkward, you know, and they're crying. But I thought it was a place. I mean, it was, I think from the Holy spirit of God, but I thought this kid felt comforted mm-hmm. and could find some peace here. Yep. And no matter what happens, it's going to be okay. You know, without now we God, fervently we, without God out, we could have offered him no hope. That's right. No. Yeah, it happens. We all die, and that's the end. I mean, it that's why been... if it's just based on a TV family, it doesn't go anywhere. When it's based on a spiritual group of people that love God, it can go somewhere. That's it can right. be. It can be an end. It and it changes people. It does. Karl Marx said that was the weakness. That was the opium of religion. Yeah, that's why people cling to it. And I'm like Carl. You, you should have tried it yourself yeah. because you're no longer you're right. here. <laughs> I've had those debates and those discussions where people say, boy, you Christians, you know, I mean, you can't. So, if the, you know, if if something bad happens, you're like, well, it was God's plan. You know, if something good happens, you're like, oh, God, yeah, you know, worked in the situation. I mean, there's like, there's no way for you to lose. And I'm thinking, well, yeah, if you're serving an almighty supernatural yeah, and God. They, yeah, and they tell us, well, y'all are just using religion as a crutch. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> the only thing <laughs> I take issue is is when they blame God for the bad things that happen. Now, some I don't know where they get that. Yeah. Because we all know there's good and evil. Right. Oh. Every, it's an evidence that there's a God. Why, right. do, why are we raised up to all of a sudden understand good and evil, whether you are affiliated with the Bible or not? Anybody that's never even heard about God, if you do something evil, you know, you take a married couple or whatever, you've made yep. that illustration many times. Oh, you know, you know good and evil. So I, I think the evil one attacks, the evil one attacked Jesus and thought that was the way to win. Yeah. But he actually used his own selfish motivation to to win ultimately because yep. his death on a cross that's right which saved us for our sins that's why that verse i love that verse that says none of the rulers and he meant the dark evil powers oh yeah knew what was happening because if they did they wouldn't have crucified they wouldn't have Jesus. Done it. that's, that's right. how they lost that's, that's right. how they lost so, but that's what sin does and you're right <clears throat> which is why we've been we've been in genesis and we've talked a lot about origins we talked about the origin of sin we talked about the origin of evil and and the evil one and so it is important to know those things because otherwise in ignorance you can blame God when it's not God. You know, that's where you, Miss Kay on on your part, I will tell you this from just watching the action, what action I saw raising these boys, I cannot think, and these boys here may back me up or they may say, no, I can't think of sons having a better mother than that woman sitting right there. I I mean, Al, I don't know how you could have, I don't know how you could have had a better mother. You see what I'm saying? I agree. That's why we're still close even now, you know, even Mm -hmm. after all these years. You remember when I did that lesson in front of the church that time and I had uh, the most courageous people. I had heroes in the faith and your mom was one of them. Because most people talked about me first. Yeah. Most people think, you know, because dad has been, you know, all over the world and sharing Jesus. And, but I go back to that in that upbringing. If mom hadn't, hadn't extended grace toward Phil. I mean, not only were you both embracing the grace that God gives us, but you extended grace. Well, we would, who knows what, what would have happened. Uh, Your daddy would have been dead at a young age (laughs) or in prison. Oh yeah. But you know, Jason, that lesson, uh, since you brought it up, you had, I remember you may have had more, but I know three because you talked about yep. Missy and you talked about mom, but you also talked about Lisa. Mm-hmm. Yep. And that was after Lisa and I had, our whole world had fallen apart. Obviously her relationship and to a certain extent, even mine with the rest of the family was, you know, in a bad place. And so that was after all that had happened. So by Jace, including Lisa in that, and he talked about it, about grace. I mean, that was a life changer for her. I mean, you know, we were in tears, you know, the whole time Jesus was doing the lessons. I, I have been shocked, Al. How many, Miss Kay will know, so how many total are there? We started with four sons, then they <laughs> oh, married, and then they have, how many does this bunch, cons- what's so the Phil, number? You that, have no idea what the oh, number the, is. Oh, the last few, he's do like, who does this one? <laughs> do y'all? Because I'm seeing people come in and marry the great-grandkids. I'm, I'm like, who, who? I mean, I could sit here <clears> and do the math. I could go through the Well, so the how numbers, many? 40 to 50? 40 to 50, Miss Kay? Oh, you yeah. don't know either? 
No. Here's what's a shocker. I never for, was good at math. Here's what's a shocker for me, Al. It's a big group. We don't know how many <laughs> this, kids this we is have. What, <laughs> this is what shocks me. I'm looking at that large a group of people, and it's grown exponentially. I remember when the full boys were here, and then y'all, you got out, and when the sinning started and all that, and we, we and then y'all left the house. So, well, then you began to marry, then the kids came, and then I started seeing great grandkids show up. And Your kid, adopted kids, yeah, show yeah adopted up. kids. We've all got what? Yeah. Three, three, three. And I, yeah. now I'm looking at a family structure. We have Asians. Part of the family, we have African Americans. Part of our family, Robertson is their name. You're like so. The, my kids began to adopt different kinds of people, and you yeah, say there's actually five adopted. Five, see, I didn't, even, I didn't even realize that five of them. Well, so here's know. the deal: you can be the proud. Robertson family at the UN. Here's what, yeah, here's what shocked me more than anything else. I said, I am amazed that so little. Uh, What's the word? Like the guy, the kid today, the the health of them all. We were. Very I said, blessed. I'm very shocked that nothing uh, of any negative consequence has happened to that many people. I mean, they all have their health. Their well, marriages are Mia intact. Had her, uh, had her. Issue. She's probably had the most serious yeah. health yeah, issue. Yeah, she has. But you know what? But she, even then, she's a she, chirper. Oh my goodness! The her reaction and the way she's responded. As a child, to have all these surgeries and do what she's done. Yeah. It's just, I mean, it's faith building for the rest of the family. So, what she, few I guess she had, would be the one that's had the the biggest yeah. health issue. Yeah. Well, I mean, she's had probably cleft palate, but now, Jace, I'm so used to it. Surgeries. I'm looking at her, I don't even notice it. Well, yeah, I mean, it's not really about that. She she struggles just with normal breathing, talking, and eating just yeah. her whole life. So, which it is makes for a miserable childhood. But still, you know, it just. I think of that Romans five passage. It produces that character and that perseverance. And but just think of Alan. She came out of it great. But that's one. That's the biggest health issue, we've which had, is unfortunate. We've had very few. But I see how she took it, and I said that's got to be the toughest little girl. How many operations has she had? Ten. Ma- it's hard to. Say. I mean, she's had a bunch, but ten. Ten majors. I mean, straightening out her mouth and her Breaking gums her and her jaws, own teeth yeah, were coming yeah. out of the roof of her mouth and there's a hole up in there. So you, you get to look at that. I've been stunned. I can only say it seems to me that it was either dog luck or it seemed like there were a lot of blessings going yeah, on no doubt. with this particular <laughs> family structure. Well, <clears throat> and that's the perfect segue to talking about uh, who we're going to be talking about the next uh, couple of podcasts, and that's Abram first before he gets to be Abraham in Genesis 12, if you guys are following along that uh, have been following our podcast. Abraham is his story is basically from twelve to twenty two Genesis twelve to twenty two if you want to read ahead. But, what's your what's your what's your thought on the name changes in the, you know you had Saul yeah. and Paul in the New Testament you have Abram and Abraham but it it happens a lot. There's a there's well a most lot of, of them are because of a character change. So what gets me is no, <clears> the no name one, changes. not many people none I know of in the Bible have a last name. Yeah, that's true. Saul, he's there. Abraham said, what was his last name? I don't know. Well, when Isaac was born, what is Isaac? What, what's the last name here? No last names given in the Bible. You either John, Paul, Maybe they Peter. Just have one name. Back John, then. Paul, Peter. You're like, do they have a last name or are they just kind of. Well, you from, know, Willie was upset. You know, at one time, Willie wasn't Willie. He was Jess. Which is how I always know when somebody's from our past because they'll ask me about Jess. And you're like, who? And it takes me a second. Well, they now. say I used to They'll be say Jason. Jason and Jess. And yeah. Jace now. You're Jace. Well, that was your husband did that. Yeah. Yeah. And mine too. Sure. And, but one year, it was, more kids were named Jace than any other boy named in one year during Dynasty. Did you I know like, that, Jace? You, you, you led the league. I and, mean, I'm wondering where you got that information. I from. read it. <laughs> She read it in the Inquirer. I'm sure. No, it's was that I the re- local I'll, paper? <laughs> I only read. Did your neighbor? Did Gordon tell you that? Is that? Is that? What no, you? really, I heard that. I read By the way, that. I think it's also interesting, and I don't know how it came together like it did. One who had escaped came and reported this to Abram. This is Genesis 14, verse 13. It's the first time in the Bible that the word Hebrew is mentioned. And that title, Abram the Hebrew, came to Abraham. 
you say it was inserted the I would think the root of the Jewish people, but the first time you read about it is Abraham the Hebrew. Yep. That's the first time it's mentioned in the Bible. Well, then you, as you follow the story, I mean, the Hebrews were the centerpiece of the story. Well, he's got the first one here. I've always wondered, Abram the Hebrew, there was something there that God used through human beings. Right. All of a sudden, we got a guy who's says, Abram, yeah, Abram the Hebrew. But there's no background on how he came up, how God came up with that particular well, name, and, and, he zeroed and it turned in. into a, a, a people. Right. And he zeroed in on the that their marriage, too. I mean, it's, it's yeah. one of the craziest stories, you know, Abram and Sarah. It is. And I don't know how men could have dreamed up something like this, Al. You couldn't. <clears throat> and, and it's kind of interesting because as we've been talking about in Genesis, so you sort of have two planes that you read the Bible, especially the Old Testament, where you have what I call the, the high big story. <clears throat> when you're looking at origins, we've been talking about things that affect all of humanity through time. But then all of a sudden, God will go in and you'll have the, the individual family. Yeah. You're going to dive into this whole thing. Yeah. There's a lot going on around there, but it'll be one family. He just kind of zeroes in on. Because he made the promise that all nations would be blessed through so Abraham it made me think about that when you Sarah. talked about the blessings. And yeah. then he's the father of the Jewish faith right. to this day. And yeah. he's the father of the Gentiles' faith. And what's well, he crazy, starts out, it calls him a Hebrew, and I'm like, Hebrew, where would that come and from? And what's Who? crazy, Phil, if you think about it, the two worlds today, the two largest religions in the world is Christianity and Islam. Islam. Well, they both come from two sons of Abraham. That is correct. You got Ishmael. Yep. He's the father of it all. Yeah. Right. And and you got Isaac. Isaac. So just but but just look at it from an evidence. You know, when people they think they'll they'll read the Bible and say, Oh, it's just a bunch of, you know, folk tales and stories. Huh. The two largest religions thousands of years later came from one guy. And we're looking and at both wife. of them. Are you kidding me? What are the odds of that? Oh, well, it, it's not even. You couldn't calculate the odds. It would, it would be an impossibility. Mm -hmm. But didn't they? Didn't it say in the Bible that Abraham would be the father, and, and he'd have as many descendants as the stars in the sky? Yeah, that's yeah. right. Because well, Jesus it just described it. It turned out to be true. Because at the time, it was just not that many people. You know, we're not too far removed from the flood and all that. That's right. And now we're talking billions. Mm -hmm. yeah. Alive at the same time, oh, yeah. so it is like the stars. But this guy's faith, you know, when you get to Hebrews eleven, which what what do we call that? Like the Hall of Faith. I call it the Hebrews Hall. You know, of they fame. have yeah. the Hall of Fame. That's I right. mean, the Hall Bible's of version of that That's right. is in Hebrews eleven. But boy, when they get to Abraham, because then it kind of you see the story here of how God used their family, and then through his seed line would right. bring Jesus. But when you get to Hebrews eleven, it gets into his heart. And what those character issues that made him, you know, the one that God chose because right. it's mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah, and one of the one of the reasons I wanted to have mom on on the podcast when we were talking about this is because the whole thing starts in Genesis twelve with a call, a direct call from God. He says, "I want you to leave everything you know, mm -hmm. your family, you and Sarah, Sarah at the time." And I want you to take off, and and you're going to go to a place, and I'll tell you when you get there, which is, which as Jay said, that lands you in the Hebrews Hall of Faith. So I mean, just think if you want an argument, if I if I said we're going duck hunting today, if I just took members of my family, yeah. Phil and Sal, and right. said, y'all get in here behind me, even if I was leading, yeah. They wouldn't do it. Where do are it. we going? Where are we going? I want to know <laughs> where we're going. I can hear sigh now. No. And what what route are we taking? And just even in that, people won't go. But by the way, the offspring news. that that Abraham had, Isaac first, when he had Ishmael through the servant through through the servant Hagar, when he came on the scene, here comes Ishmael, the father of the Islamic faith too. The angel of the Lord said said to to uh, Hagar. You are now with child. You will have a son. You will name him Ishmael, for the Lord has heard of your misery. Check this out. This was when he's born, 
By the way, uh, Hagar, when he's born, this Ishmael and Abraham being his father, he will be a wild donkey of a man. Mm-hmm. His hand will be against everyone and everyone's hand against him. And he will live in hostility toward all his brothers. Yep. That's a prediction made of Ishmael. He had, he had about 10 or 12 sons, as you read further in the Bible, and these 10 or 12 sons, watch, here's what it says uh, when I find it. He had these sons, and it says, uh, here's the sons, and they, and they would be, they will be wild donkeys of men. And, Where's that at in Genesis? And hostility toward yeah. his brother. Yeah, that's, so you uh, see that played out. I mean, some yeah. would say, in you know, you got groups of people flying into buildings, and you know, right. yeah. the hostility. I mean, which is not all of them. Well, but, let, let's yeah. face it, though. Even the whole Arab world in the Middle East, I would call it a place of <laughs> um, difficulty. Yeah, you know, and, yep. con- and well, so I was there last follows, year. I mean, look, the- I sensed the tension when I crossed that border from Israel into Palestine. We we went into uh, Bethlehem. Yeah, hostility, tension. You know, I mean, yep. we met and had a service at a building. You know, the church, we're the people, but you know, the church met at that building, and they said this building's been bombed fourteen times. Well, how much more hostility do you need? But it was yeah. still the you had it was still the descendants of the two sons right. that were causing all the tension. I was right in the middle of it, right. but it was just incredible. Oh, and, and, and like you said, it's palpable. And you know what's funny is I was in Palestine and I never saw a woman. We're talking about you know Abraham and, mm-hmm. and Sarah. Yeah, it just was weird. I mean, we drove all through the towns. We I never laid my eyes on a woman. It was just men. You know they were there somewhere. I know they were there somewhere, but they weren't out in public. So, so mom, back to the, to, so the call. So I, I, could, I, I couldn't help but make this connection and, and it's not direct, but I mean, I just, I couldn't help but think about you. So you think, well, what was Sarah thinking when Abram comes to her and says, pack it up. God spoke to me. We're heading out. You know, there had to be some doubt. So I thought about you because when dad became a Christian and mm-hmm. now our lives were changing, but he's still a new Christian. So there's struggle. And he went to school and got his master's because he was going to teach and coach, and you know that was going to be his life plan. So, what was what was your thought process when he said, "I'm going to walk away from all that. I feel called, led to find us some acreage on a river somewhere and hunt and fish." Which, which I did. Yeah. So, what was your, I did? Tell us about your mindset because I really think there's a, a good parallel between Sarah's mindset. Because cause you remind dad was right. You remind us a lot of the description, like in First Peter 3 and other, of the kind of woman she was, that quiet, gentle spirit, the mm-hmm. one that you know loves her, her husband. So what was your mindset when that was going on? I mean, it had to be hard. We were kids, so we didn't really know what was happening. At well, the it was very hard. Level. But what I'd seen before, what I thought when I thought he'd be a coach and a teacher and act right, he didn't. And he put us there to a worse place, you know, up in mm-hmm. Junction City. Right. And, you know, then we moved to Farmville, basically him running from the law, like Jesse James or something. And, you know, then from there to come here, because I had a job here. Right. And then when he said all that, you know, I was like, really, I was scared. But I knew that when he became a Christian – then he's got to do right. And I knew he would because God would be in him. So she I had about had a two-year time frame because yeah. I was at OCS at yep. the time. That's right. You still taught so, it first. Yeah, so I got right. on my feet. Right. And the see, fact that you were a coach and a teacher is almost hard to get my mind. Can you imagine <laughs> yeah. kids coming in and they're like, here's your teacher. Yeah. <laughs> he was my home Whoa. teacher. <laughs> yeah, but 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 it was a couple of years there of yeah. that teaching at Washtenaw. I said I was teach at a Christian school. I said because they're they're good. I told her one time, this is leading up to the speech I gave her about finding a place on the river, and here's yeah. what I want to do. But leading up to that, 
around Christian kids, I told her one time, I said, I'll tell you this. I had taught in the public school at Junction City back in my wild days. Yep. I looked at those children. When I started teaching at that Christian school, I said, I'll give them this. I said, this, this Jesus thing, that's when I was getting on my feet. Yep. I said, I know one thing, it produces gr- very good children. Yeah. I said, these are the best kids I've ever been around. I said, they're they're kind. They're not belligerent. They're, 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 they're really good kids. Exactly. But anyway, what came out of that is the day I reached in my pocket in the exact well, I remember it. I showed her that duck call. I said, did you see this duck call right here? And she said, yeah. I said, here's what I want to do. You find me a place on the river. Now, she's standing there. She's looking at me. I said, find me a place on the river. I'm getting out of the school teaching business. We're an apartment, by the way, in town. Yeah. So. I said this thing. A little apartment. A little apartment. I said, school teaching, it tops out at about 40 grand a year if you're lucky. Not I, there, but. Yeah. I said, so. <laughs> yeah, you didn't yeah, get not there. there. I was getting 150 Public. a week at the time. <laughs> I said, let's see, 150 Ooh, a week, 150 a week, so that's 600 a month. I said, I have these children. I said, you know, I mean, my own kids. I said, find me a place on the river, and I said, here's the way it'll work. I'll fish the river, and we'll sell the fish. We will survive. It will be survival mode. And we will break every child labor law. Oh, no, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, we'll break child labor law, the whole work. And don't call I said, OSHA. I said, Somehow I'll get this duck call. You see this duck call? I said, this thing sounds just like a duck. I said, I will get this on the market. And I said, you will have that long green. Here's where I put it. That long green in your pocket. I said, if you'll do this. I said, but I'm going to need a place on the river. If we want to leave, we can leave in the dead of night and go all the way to the Gulf of Mexico. No <laughs> lake. I said, it's got to be a yeah. river that flows. What's crazy is that when you got to this point, we're right outside. Yeah, this, right we're here on the, the hill. We're right here. Command center. I we're said, right find here. me a place He's where like, if we want to leave we'll in the middle it. of the night, we can. And I said, the duck calling, when it gets going, I said, Miss Kay, I'm telling you, this will work. She said, she paused for about a three count. One, two, three. And she's looking at me. And she was thinking, and she's, her exact words were, let's do it. I said. And I said, I hope we won't starve to death. You forgot that. She found, <laughs> yeah. She said, I hope we won't starve to death. I said, well, hard times will be there. I said, but look, we'll weather the thing. The Lord's with us. So anyway, she found this place where we're seated yep. right now. And now it's been 40 years ago. You eat a lot of fish. Now, we pulled it off with God's help, but it didn't take. But somebody but, said, well, how long did it take to go from poor to quit selling fish and get, to get rich? I said, about 40 years. 40 years. It was a 40-year plan. But he didn't tell something else. Tell it. We had money. We had to get money to start the business. Who provided that? Not Sister Robertson. My, my <laughs> boss, where I worked, went hunting with him and saw him fixing everybody's duck calls. And he knew. He saw me calling in ducks. Yeah. Yeah. He did. He wasn't fixing just calling, the duck call. he was commanding. The but duck. if I hadn't worked for him, True, okay. I just want to say I had something so to did do you with it. So did you, yeah, you, just, you did it, Mom. So, because you were the ones kind of, you were putting everything together. Dad had the big vision. So did you put the deal together? Because She Grand, put it together. Granny and Paul came down. And my understanding was they put up the down payment for the loan, yeah. right? And then you, you, y'all would pay the note because they were retiring. So did you put that together? How did that come about? I've, always, I've never well. asked you that. Well, when they called and I told her we were fishing to buy this place and it had an extra two houses yeah. with it. And then that's what she said. That's what we'd like to do right on the road. Because they were in Arizona. At the but time. she said, we don't want to put it in our name. Right. We just want to give you the money to get it. Yeah. And then we'll stay there as long as we want. You remember to. the original the the selling price of the whole place? It's like Tw- twenty nine twenty nine thousand <laughs> seven acres of land, seven acres two, of land two, two houses, two houses. houses. Twenty nine grand. But and, you got to remember, Paul and Ma and Paul put up five thousand so we could get it. We paid the note, which was how much a month? Well, remember this is nineteen seventy six. This is not the business note. This is the house yeah, note. Right, one hundred and sixty eight dollars right. a month. But you got to remember one, <laughs> and, one and interest rate was about twenty percent of the time. Well, but you zone. think about it, that's when old flood zone. Uh, J- Carter, Jimmy Carter. Carter was in there and it got up to twenty percent. Oh, it was twenty percent interest. But what am I? She did all of that, which tells you she's the woman. And what's the, the Ecclesiastes? I no, mean, it's a Proverbs, Proverbs thirty one. Proverbs thirty one. Yep. That's exactly what she turned out to be. 
really was moment. behind the because dad, which is why I compared it to this moment because to me, it's it was your Abraham and Sarah moment. I mean, it was the it was. moment to go. Her boss said, "How much will it take?" When I came to him, she said, "Go, go to Mister Brazier." And he's Baxter my boss. Baxter Brazier. Said, yeah, Baxter yeah. Brazier said he he said he's got it all worked out. Just go see him. So I went up there. I said, "Well." Uh, Miss Kay said that you had, you had backed me on this loan. I said, you know, you understand you're liable to lose this money. I said, it's, there's a potential you'll lose it. I said, I don't think. And he said, you're going to build duck calls? I said, I'm going to build duck calls, but I I, I, I need an investment to, to get I have equipment. no money. Yeah. yeah, I have no money. He mm-hmm. said, take this piece of paper. He kind of whistled. <laughs> he put a piece of paper. He said, take this piece of paper to the bank, and when they say you want how much – I said twenty five thousand. That's I can get into business twenty five thousand dollars. He said, "Go tell the banker that. Take this piece of paper with you, and when they ask for collateral, that's when you hand them the paper. Just walk in, say I want twenty five thousand dollars. When they ask you, Mister well, Robinson, do you have any collateral? I said. He said the paper is your collateral. That's me. I really? said, I, I said, hadn't heard this. Oh, yeah. That's so true. I went in there and I said, told him, I said, where's this? Where's the head of this outfit? Oh, and then the secretary looked around like, what? I said, where's the he looked worse who's the head he honcho man. around here? That's hard to believe. And that's said, hard that's believe. Mr. I can't remember his name. Can you remember his name? It'll come it was the too. guy at the bank, Regents Bank. Yeah, he's Campbell. Yeah, yeah. Campbell. 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 George Campbell was his name. Campbell. So George Campbell, he's back there, you and know. We went to his secretary. And just stood there and told her we wanted to meet with him. And she happened to go to our church. You didn't that remember positive, that. There's, there's, there's the positive side. Yeah. The and sister. we said, well, we, she said, well, y'all can go over there and sit down. And we said, can we just stand here by your desk? I mean, we felt like with us a Christian, maybe that'll help us. And, you know, we. <laughs> it was a little <laughs> dicey because she was a little, you know, hesitant. And I said, I need to see the prayers of the outfit. So yeah, she I'll gets us a nice here. They thought the chances that they would ever get that oh, that's right. back were that's like right. slim. That's right. And none. So anyway, I go back there and Cam was sitting there and we talked it over. He said, How much do you need? I said, twenty five thousand. He said, Do you have any collateral? Just like Mr. Brazier had said. Paper. And I got the paper and I handed it to him. And his first reaction was, whatever that girl's name was, the secretary, can you bring us some coffee? I thought, I'm in. <laughs> This is going to happen. Bring coffee. us some coffee. <laughs> You're he, good. he saw Brazier had plenty of money to shuck out the 25000 yeah, yeah. He said, this old guy, he ain't going anywhere, but this guy thinks he will. He backed it. So that was – now, Campbell, George Campbell, now tells – he's been telling that story for years on yeah. how the whole thing got started. He said, I came in there barefooted, ragged looking, and said, you I know, mean, after give hearing me 25, that, I'm, I'm going to say that, that God – Pulled that off. Is that, that <laughs> exactly my point. So, so you, so you look at Abraham, and he's, and that's you get that blessing, and that's exactly what I happened. want to share one story because what I think, you know, just from looking at this and reading the New Testament, and and when you think about how God uses families and the birth of your children as motivation, and then being born again, you know, two nights ago I hadn't told y'all this, but you know, the Lindsay family that we all know and love, well, Alice's daughter she came she heard me preach Sunday, and you know she's kind of been off the reservation Mm -hmm. because it's the same as us when you're young and your parents aren't christians it does have an impact and sometimes you're just trying to build that bridge but she she asked alice if she you know thought that i would talk to her and uh, she said i'm sure he would you know which we all know what that means you know she came over there look was a hundred percent on i didn't say a word she sat down and she's like I had a drug problem you know my life's been chaos and i've been this close i've seen all my family come to christ and have you know wonderful lives you know what do i need to do so i shared jesus with her. of course alice is sitting there because she's you know thinking for the motivation of her kids she's led an awesome life i mean we'll all say she's a warrior you know mm-hmm. for jesus and oh, it finally is. it finally hit her well now you know, her daughter, who has a six-year-old daughter, mm-hmm. she said, because she said, I don't want my kid, you know, to grow up and, and miss this. And I thought about how God uses those, because y'all were, like you said, motivated to do the right thing for your kids. I think that's a thing God uses to get people's attention. I mean, you just think about it. You're born again, but when you see your kids born, yep. whether you're a Christian or not, that's a life-changing moment. That's right. I mean, you see that life, and it'll then be motivation 
to do better. And so I shared Jesus. We we really uh, focused on grace, and I loved it because Missy's like, you know, we have a pool, you know, <laughs> behind our house. You know? And I was, just drop that. And in she there. never said a word about it, and so I thought I didn't know how to read it. You know, it went yeah. on for a couple of hours, and she just kind of sat there. It was kind of teary eyed, and then she said, "I guess you got an extra towel." And uh, I was like, "Yeah." She's like, I, I need to, you know, I need to do this. So that was that Let's was just two nights ago. Again. Yeah, we went and baptized her. I didn't know that, Jason. Yeah, it was it. awesome. It was really awesome. I've been night. seeing them. But when you talked about that being motivated by your kids, you know, I, I was seeing her generation. There's a mom who came to the Lord. I think I shared with her 25 years ago. And I worked and then, with her yeah, for years. She's a part and of and her then family. here's her daughter, you know. Well, now she has a daughter. And it was just mm-hmm. like okay here this we have this moment where this family is coming together to do something amazing for god the abraham the sarah the it's family it was Turgen, awesome Isaac, yeah. and it's that seed line idea which we're going to dive into deeper as we go obviously uh i i think abraham is probably the behind jesus is probably the central figure of the bible because he's talked about so much in the new testament so we'll we'll do that for the next podcast or two a lot to unpack uh but at the same time you see how practical it is that it's living life every day. So yep. that's what that seed line, that promise does. So, uh, Mom, we're glad you were with us Thanks today. for being here, Kay. Yeah, you, did Thank you know you're our first guest on the no, Unashamed podcast? The I very first that. one is the what you have. What you have for dinner there? You rustled up this morning. What yeah, you so got you had for to dinner? Because you're always the cook. I'm kind of hungry. As soon as I got up, before I even had anything like him having to do his stuff. You mean you got up coffee. this morning? Yeah. Right. We're past that. Then I yeah. went in the kitchen, and I I had put out something to thaw out, and when I started cooking it, it's Swiss steak. Oh, let's Ooh. go. Let's Swiss go. steak. But all you I have me to a do, Swiss steak, Kay. Let's go. <laughs> all I have to do is cook the rice, and we're ready to eat. 20 minutes. I'll cook the rice for you. As oh. the Cajuns say, she calls it Swiss steak, but the Cajuns call it sauce piquant. Yeah, I love it. It is sauce like piquant. that. It really is. Well, mom, you are you are the best mom. Dad was right, and you're still taking care of us after all this time. So that's exactly welcome right. to our podcast. But me and Justin don't argue anymore. We just you just don't talk to him before start noon. If we don't go eat the sauce, I think no, by the time go. we get to heaven, I don't think there'll ever be boredom or yeah, yeah, yeah. I think everybody, because there's no tears, no, 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 no problem, and we'll be together forever. That is a pretty cool thought, Al. I kind of yeah. like to argue. I can't think of a better oh, bus to be with. <laughs> I know he liked to argue. All right, Two we got to get out of here. We got to eat. Let's See go. You. See you next time. So we're so glad you guys were with us today. You can subscribe on iTunes or Spotify or YouTube or Facebook, and be sure and rate us on iTunes so that other people can know about the podcast.